So now you've learned how to use arrays and dictionaries to store data. I've also shown you how you can use an index to access a specific item in an array, and also how to use a key with a dictionary to get the associated value for that key. Wouldn't it be nice if you knew how to look through all of the items in your array or dictionary? Well, to do this, you use a loop, and that is the topic of today's lesson. We're going to dive right in and start working in Swift. Here I've got a brand new playground. I've also got an array and a dictionary declared. So for my array, I have three items, cat, dog, and bird. And for the dictionary, I've made the data, the cat, dog, and bird. And as for the key, for each of those pieces of data, I've just made up a name for them. So each key value pair is the name and the value for the key is the, I guess, the type of animal. So in this video, we are going to first loop through the array. And we're going to use a type of loop called the for in loop. And I'm going to show you the rest of the loops, but we're going to start with the for in loop. So the keyword you use is for, and essentially it's going to go through each item in the array one by one. Um, so in the next part of this for in loop declaration, you just put a variable. So I'm going to call this variable animal, and then you use the in keyword. And next you put the collection that you want to loop through. In this case, it is our array. And then you s open up a set of curly brackets that you've been so familiar with using in functions and classes. But essentially what happens is the code inside the curly brackets is going to be run for every single animal in the array. So what I can do is just simply print out animal so that you can see what's happening. As you can see down here, it prints out cat, dog, and bird. Well, what's happening? It's taking each item in the array one by one, and it's running this code in here. So for the first item in the array is cat, right? And so that is going to be assigned to this variable called animal, which we put here. And then we can reference that item and just print it out. And then it loops, basically running this code again for the next animal. It's going to assign dog the next item in that array to the variable animal, and then we can use it inside the code here. Each time it loops, it's called an iteration. And when we are looping through the array like this, it's called iterating through the array. Now let me show you looping through a dictionary. So let's do that down here. And again, use the for keyword followed by a variable that the key value pair is going to get assigned to. But this time, you can't simply use a single variable because there are two pieces of data, right? The key is the first piece of data and the value is the next piece. So you actually have to write it like this. Let me get rid of animal for now. And you start a pair of rounded brackets and inside you put the variable that you want to use for the key. So here I'm gonna call it name and then you do comma, and you put the variable that you wanna use for the, the value. And this can be animal. And then next you put the in keyword, followed by the collection you want to iterate through. And for us, that would be our dictionary. And again, you start a pair of curly brackets like that, and the code inside the curly brackets is going to execute for each key value pair. And ignore these for now. It's just saying that we declared these two variables for the key and the value, but we've never used them. We are going to use them soon. Okay, so this right here is actually a special kind of variable. It's called a tuple. And you can think of it just like a group of variables. So in this for in loop, it's going to go through each key value pair. In our dictionary that we declared up here, we actually have three key value pairs. So for each of the key value pairs in our dictionary, it's going to put the key into this name variable that we have in our tuple, and it's going to put the value in the animal variable that we have here. So if we wanted to print it out, we can simply do something like this. Well, we can simply use the variables. So let's print out a statement. We can substitute name in there is a Uh, animal. Make sure we close this string here and we should get 
Oop, I have a typo right here. So you can see here it loops three times because we have three key value pairs. And for each of the key value pairs, it prints out our statement. It's substituting the key into here and the value into here. So furball is a cat, Moby is a dog, and Tweety is a bird. So looping through collections of data is a very common use for this for in loop. Let's take a look at some other uses and also some other types of loops. The for in loop can also just be used to loop through a range of numbers. For example, you can do for and then you can say, um, you can create a variable here, let's just say i in one, and then you use three dots to indicate the range, 10, and then you open up a pair of curly brackets like that, and we can simply print i. And you can see down here that it's printing out one, two, three, Right, basically for each iteration of the loop, it starts at one because that's the lower end of our range and it ends at 10. So you just remember that these are inclusive in the range. And you can also use this to go through an array because you can access the items in an array by specifying the index, right? So for example, let's demonstrate this looping through the array using a range of numbers. And why would we want to do this? Because sometimes uh, it is nice having the index in a variable that you can access if you need, for some reason, the index number. Because using this way, this for in loop, it doesn't really give you the index number to use. So let me just demonstrate what I mean. So I can say for index, in and then here we specify the range and the range for an array starts at zero so we have to start at zero in order to get the first item in the array uh, how far do we go well what we do is we say array dot count because that is the capacity of the array that's how many items are in there however because remember that array start at zero and the last item in the array is always the count minus one. So that is our range. And we open up a set of curly brackets like that. Uh, just to demonstrate the range, in case you forgot, taking, for instance, our array up here, cat is at index zero, dog is at index one, and bird is at index two, even though we have three items in our array. So count is going to return three, but we only want to go up to index two. So that's why the range is zero to count minus one. So here we can print out a statement saying uh, index, we're gonna substitute the index variable in there, contains, and then we are going to substitute array and pass in the index. You know, this is the index right here, All right? So down here in the console, you're seeing index zero contains cat, index one contains dog, and index two contains bird. So iterating through an array using this kind of technique will give you access to both the index and also the item in the array. Whereas going through the array using this technique is a lot easier to type, right? It's a lot faster and is great if you don't need to access the index number. While we're on the topic of looping through collections of data, I want to tell you about a special keyword that can instantly break out of the loop. Let's say you are looping through this array right here. Uh, let's use this example right here. Breaking out of a loop. And let's use animal for animal in array, we are going to print animal. And this is basically what we did uh, when we first started the playground, but I want to show you the special keyword called break. So for example, if I just put that, what oh, don't need that semicolon. If I just put the break keyword like this, it's basically going to start iterating through the array, 
It's going to print out the first item, which is cat, right? And then it hits this keyword called break, and that instantly stops the loop. As you can see, the other items in that array don't get printed out after cat. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, one example is if you're looking for a specific animal, let's say I am trying to say, trying to find bird. So I can say if animal is equal bird using an if statement, then I can break. So it's basically going to print out, well, bird is the last item. So let me say dog. If I'm looking for dog, see, it prints out cat and then it prints out dog. And then it comes down here and detects that the animal is a dog. And then we call break because we found dog and we no longer have to go through the rest of the array. If your array contains a lot of data, this can save you a lot of effort. Well, it'll save you a lot of computing power because once you have what you want, there's no point in uh, going through the rest of the items in the collection. That's just one scenario where you might want to break out of a loop using the break keyword, but there are many others as well that I'm sure you'll encounter in your own programming. So just keep in mind that you can break out of a loop using this keyword. Now that we've covered iterating through collections of data, let me show you uh, some other uses for loops. And this will give me an opportunity to also demonstrate another type of loop. I'm going to start a fresh playground because this is uh, actually getting kind of full. We have a ton of print statements and this is a nice way to uh, keep all of these uh, pieces of code together because this all relates to iterating through collections of data. So I'm going to start with a scenario. What if we wanted to fill an array, which I have declared right here, it's empty, with 10 random numbers in the range of 1 to 10, and duplicates are okay. Well, you might use a for in loop that is going to loop 10 times, right? So let's write this out. We have four, and let's just use i in uh, 1 to 10 and that is actually 10 times right because these are inclusive so then you're gonna have a pair of curly brackets like that and inside you would probably do something like this uh, we could do we can use a variable actually var random number equals arc for random uniform and we're gonna put the upper bound as 10 but this gives us the range of zero to nine. So we are just going to add one to that, which is going to give us one to 10. And then you are going to put that random number into an array. So we are going to say something like array uh, dot append. And you can either append the random number like this, or as you learned another way, you can also, and I'm just gonna put this as a comment because this is just for your own reference. You could probably do that as well, the sort of short form way. Okay, so arc for random underscore uniform actually returns a data type uint32, which is basically stands for unsigned integer, and 32 is, um, you can think of it as the size of the integer. So uh, what we can do is simply convert that to int, like that. And what it's saying here, I is never used, we can consider replacing it with underscore. So that is um, a very interesting point. When you use a for in loop like this, and you simply need to execute a code 10 times, you don't really care about this variable here. Um, an optimization is actually just to replace this variable with an underscore. And that's what this warning is saying actually. See, so consider replacing with underscore or removing it. So you can do that because you don't care about the variable in there. It's more uh, legible. Um, but if you did need to use this uh, counter or this index, then by all means, you can put a variable there. But for us, we only need to loop through uh, code 10 times. So we are going to put an underscore there. Okay, so here it's saying that variable random number was never mutated, consider changing to let constant. All right, that's fine as well. Since we never assigned anything else to random number, we can change it to let, okay. Um, so now we have got 10 random numbers in our array. Let's print them out. 
So here we can say for, actually we can print it out as we are appending them. So print random number. And what have we got here? So we've got 18732685971. You can see there are duplicates, right? 8 and 8 and 7 and 7. But it doesn't matter because we've satisfied this scenario here. Now I'm going to change the scenario a bit. So let me copy this and let me paste this here. And let me change this to say no duplicates. All right, in this case, how would we do it? Right, a for loop is only going to iterate a number of times. It's a specified finite number of times. There's no guarantee, even if we put a thousand, that we are going to get, let's not, not do that, our console window is going crazy. There's no guarantee that we are going to get 10 unique numbers in the specified amount of iterations. In this case, we used a while loop. The for in loop that we've been using iterates a specified number of times, whereas a while loop will loop indefinitely until the condition that we specify is met. There are two kinds of while loops actually, and I'll demonstrate both of them. Let's go back to the playground and take a look. So down here, I am going to just assign a brand new array to our array variable. And this is just so I can um, remove all of the items in the array, or actually I can say something like this. I can just do remove all like that. And that's just going to clear the array for us to use right now. And I'm also going to comment out this print statement so we don't see anything in the console. Okay, so now we're gonna demonstrate the while loop. So I mentioned that there are two types. The first type is that it's going to loop first and then it's going to check a certain condition. If that condition is not met, it's going to loop again, and then it checks the condition. If it's not met, it's gonna loop again. It's just gonna keep doing that and checking the condition at the end of the loop until that condition is satisfied, and then in that case, it will stop looping. So let's see how that works. You use the keyword repeat, and then you open up a set of curly brackets, and then down here, you use the keyword while, and then here, you put the condition. So for us, we are going to continue looping until our array contains 10 elements. Um, in other words, we are going to continue looping while the count is less than 10. Okay, and inside here, we are going to first generate a random number, and we're just going to use the same statement as up here to generate a random number, like that. And here we're going to check if the number if the number exists already. So here we are going to say if the array and this function you've probably never seen yet, there's an array called contains where you can check if the array contains the given element. It's going to return true if the array contains it and it's going to return false if it doesn't. So let's use this and let's pass in a random number as a parameter. And if it is false, in other words, if it doesn't contain it yet, we are then going to append it, random number. And we also have to convert the random number to an int because it is a uint32. We can do that up here. And so what happens now is basically it's going to generate a random number. And if it doesn't exist in the array, it's going to append it. But if it does exist, then it's going to come down here. It's going to check that the array doesn't have 10 numbers yet. And then it's going to repeat. And it's going to keep doing that and keep doing that until there are 10 numbers in there. So why don't we output it and do a check for number in array print number. So wait for the playground to do its thing. So let's check in the console and see what we've got here. So you can see we have uh, basically 1 to 10. And I'm not sure how many iterations it took, but it satisfies the conditions now. We don't have any duplicates. 
All right, so that's one reason you would use a while loop, right? If you need to loop indefinitely until a certain condition is met, you can do that. Now, I told you there were two kinds of while loops. Let me erase this part where we're outputting the numbers. Um, the second while loop goes like this. The condition goes first. So you go while array count is less than 10, and then you open up your curly brackets and your code goes here. And that's basically it. So the difference between these two loops is that this one checks the condition first, and only if that condition hasn't been met, then it loops. Whereas this one will actually run this code at least once before it checks the condition. So that's the only difference between these two while loops. One checks the condition first and then loops, and one loops at least one time and then checks the condition to see whether or not it should loop again. All right, today you guys learned about loops. You learned about how to use a foreign loop to go through all of the items in your array or dictionary. You also learned about while loops that can be used to loop until a certain condition is met. You learned that there are two kinds of while loops, the regular while loop that checks the condition first before it loops, and the repeat while loop that loops once and then checks the condition at the end whether or not it should loop again. I highly recommend you download the worksheet below to get some more practice with loops. And if you want to check out the official documentation page for loops, I'll link to that below as well. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button below. And if you don't want to miss a single video, make sure you tap on that bell icon as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.